Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Last week, NVIDIA rolled out a new driver update at Gamescom version 436.02. Normally driver updates aren't super exciting, they just include day one updates for games, a few bug fixes and performance updates, you know the drill. But this particular driver update is one of the larger ones from NVIDIA in recent months. It actually introduces several new interesting features that I'll be looking at in today's video. Firstly, we have performance updates for some games like Apex Legends and Forza Horizon 4, promising up to 23% faster performance compared to driver 431.60 with some RTX GPUs. Without going into too much detail on this, Steve was able to verify that some of these games, in particular Apex and Forza, did receive hefty performance gains and will of course be bringing you up-to-date numbers in some of our benchmark comparisons in the near future. The other updates are all introducing new features to the driver. We have GPU integer scaling, which is fantastic for retro gaming and pixel art games. We have 30-bit color support, also introduced to a recent NVIDIA Studio driver. We have more G-Sync compatible monitors. And crucially, we have two new additions that rival some of AMD's latest features for their graphics cards. The first of the new features is a new ultra-low latency option. This is NVIDIA's response to AMD's Radeon anti-lag technology, which we covered on the channel previously. NVIDIA does a great job of summarizing what this technology does, so I guess I'll just quote them here. With the release of our Gamescom Game Ready driver, we're introducing a new ultra-low latency mode that enables just-in-time frame scheduling, submitting frames to be rendered just before the GPU needs them. This further reduces latency by up to 33%. Low latency modes have the most impact when your game is GPU bound, and frame rates are between 60 and 100 FPS, enabling you to get the responsiveness of high frame rate gaming without having to decrease graphical fidelity. So yeah, Basically the same as Radeon Anti-Lag, both technologies delay the CPU from gathering inputs and processing frames until just before the GPU is ready, reducing input lag in GPU-bound scenarios. This can reduce input lag by nearly one full frame in best case scenarios. This also puts to bed the fact that Anti-Lag and this new ultra-low latency mode are not the same as setting max pre-rendered frames to one. Nvidia's control panel now distinguishes between the two modes through a new low latency option, with on meaning the previous setting where max pre-rendered frames equals one and ultra meaning the new low latency mode equivalent to anti-lag. I did some brief testing with Nvidia's ultra low latency mode and came to the conclusion it works basically the same as Radeon anti-lag. So if you're interested in seeing the pros and cons of this technology, the best place for that is my previous video covering anti-lag. In general it's a neat feature but in situations that are already optimized for low latency gaming like playing at a very high frame rate, it has a limited impact. The bigger addition to this new driver is a new freestyle sharpening filter. Previously, I did a couple of videos looking at AMD's Radeon image sharpening and came to the conclusion that NVIDIA's option at the time, the original freestyle sharpening option available in the detail filter, was poor from both a visual quality and performance standpoint. Overall, Radeon image sharpening was a significantly better option. So, NVIDIA has revamped their sharpening option available through Freestyle. This new filter sits as a standalone option, separate from the detail filter that's simply called Sharpen. It can be used in all the ways that Freestyle has been accessible for years, so that means on any NVIDIA GPU through GeForce Experience, provided the game is included in NVIDIA's whitelist of over 600 titles, covering all of DX9, DX11, DX12, and Vulkan APIs. So as you might have expected, the rest of this video will be covering the new sharpening filter and how it stacks up to some of the methods that we've already tested. There's a couple of huge questions to answer here. Is NVIDIA's new technique as good as, or perhaps even better than Radeon image sharpening? What is the performance impact like? And does this make DLSS completely obsolete? That last one will be very, very interesting as we go through some of the testing. Our setup here is standard. I'm using my Core i9 9900K test rig with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 memory. And for this testing, I've gone with the GeForce RTX 2070 Founders Edition. This is the same GPU we used for the NVIDIA portion of our previous Radeon image sharpening testing. And it's in the same performance class as AMD's Radeon RX 5700 XT we used there. And of course, we're using the latest 436.02 drivers that are now available. To use the new sharpening filter, it's very simple. In a supported game, hit Alt plus F3 to open up the freestyle overlay. From there, you can choose the sharpen filter, and you'll notice there are two controls here, one to adjust the sharpening strength and another for grain rejection. These settings are saved on an individual game basis. 
Immediately, this is one area where NVIDIA has a big advantage over AMD's Radeon image sharpening. RAS is a single global toggle that applies to all games with the same strength. There is no slider for optimizing the filter, and it cannot be enabled on a per game basis. To me, this is one of the major flaws to RAS because some games require more sharpening than others, and in some games, you may not want sharpening at all. For image quality comparisons, let's start here with the Metro Exodus menu, which is such a great test case for this type of filter. Here we're looking at native 4K versus the new freestyle filter set to its default settings, which is a sharpening strength of 50%. This is quite a substantial improvement to sharpness, especially if we zoom into some areas that might be hard to see at full resolution on a YouTube video. Metro, which I believe uses TAA for its anti-aliasing, and there is no fine control over this setting, is slightly blurry by default. The new freestyle sharpening filter cleans all of this up, especially in the map area with its fine lines, without introducing noticeable haloing around text elements. It also handles the purposefully blurry text on the CRT screen quite well. You can see how this new filter here stacks up to the old freestyle sharpening filter, available through the detail setting and also set to 50%. Both of these filters are still available in the latest driver, but it's clear that the old method is not as good. In some areas, textures are slightly sharper with the old mode, but that's at the expense of worse haloing and inferior handling of fine detail, such as with the map in the upper left corner. Both modes have strength sliders, but these flaws seem to be consistent across the strength ranges. Here's where we put the new freestyle filter up against Radeon image sharpening. I've looked at these filters in not just this game, but several others, and to my eyes, they are virtually indistinguishable when the freestyle filter is set to its default settings. In the Metro Exodus menu here, the handling of the menu text, the map, other textures, the CRT screen, and so on, are very close to identical, if not identical, between the two modes. This makes me think that NVIDIA is using a very similar contrast adaptive shading technique. In fact, it could be using the same technique given AMD's CAS filter is open source. Let's switch over to the Division 2 for a moment here, still comparing the new Freestyle filter with Radeon Image Sharpening. Again, with default settings here, both produce a similar result. And that's great for those that want to use resolution downsampling. Here the game is running at 75% resolution scale with sharpening, and looks decent, close to a native 4K presentation in some ways. However, to my eyes, the default settings in this game are a little too sharp. NVIDIA Freestyle has a big advantage here in that I can tune down the sharpening strength to around 20%, which looks much better in this title and doesn't have as many oversharp artifacts. There is no such option for AMD's equivalent. So here we've looked just at resolution downsampling, which for those playing at 4K or other high resolutions is a great way to achieve better performance with a minimal hit to visual quality. Set the game to a 75% resolution scale or around 1800p and slap on a high quality sharpening filter like this new freestyle filter or radio and image sharpening and it's almost like you're playing at the native resolution in terms of image quality but with a significant performance bump. Of course, NVIDIA has another way to achieve the same results, and that's through DLSS. This is a technique that attempts to reconstruct a higher resolution image from a lower base using the tensor cores on NVIDIA's RTX GPUs. Previously, we found that the performance and image quality that DLSS achieves is roughly equivalent to resolution downsampling in the 60 to 75% resolution scale range, so that's around 1800p. Here we have Battlefield 5, and I've lined up a side-by-side -side comparison with the game running at a 4K native resolution, 4K DLSS, and a 78% resolution scale of 4K, delivering around the same performance as DLSS, then sharpened with both the new Freestyle filter and Radeon image sharpening. To me, there is no doubt whatsoever that the resolution scaled then sharpened image, whether that's with Freestyle or Radeon image sharpening, which are virtually identical, delivers a much better presentation than DLSS. In this game, DLSS is very blurry and miles behind the native 4K image, whereas the resolution scaled then sharpened image gets pretty close to native if a little behind in super fine detail. In this game, I just don't see why you'd use DLSS. Of course, there are better DLSS implementations, here we have Metro Exodus, but again, the downsampled to 0.7 times image, which is then sharpened, preserves more detail and avoids the oil painting effect that I don't like about the DLSS image. Here, the sharpened version gets very close to the native 4K presentation, whereas DLSS just looks a bit weird, which is an artifact of its deep learning reconstruction technique. If you zoom into some areas like the rocks or grass with lots of fine detail, the differences are really highlighted. While DLSS does a decent job with larger items like close textures, 
It's in these fine elements where to me, the sharpened image preserves more realistic fine detail compared to DLSS. Of course, the next step is to look at performance. We previously found with Radeon image sharpening in the Division 2 that enabling this feature resulted in a negligible performance impact on AMD's Navi GPUs. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Nvidia's implementation on the RTX 2070. However, the new freestyle filter is a noticeable improvement over the old mode, where the old detail filter tanked performance, dropping the average frame rate in this game by 12%, the new filter is more manageable. A 6% drop, which is exactly half the impact as Nvidia stated it would be, is much better and turns out to only be a few FPS in most cases. The impact is also very similar to the reshade port of AMD's CAS algorithm, which as we saw previously, resulted in a 4% drop to frame rates in this title. Given reshade CAS set to around 0.8 and freestyle set to 50% sharpening delivers similar visuals, this suggests Nvidia's implementation is a little worse, though it's a bit of a negative negligible difference considering I saw less than 1% improvement moving from the freestyle filter to the CAS implementation in Reshade. What's also interesting to me is the performance comparison when resolution downsampling. Here's Metro Exodus running at a 4K 0.7x shader scale, plus the results for 4K DLSS. In this game, the new freestyle filter had a smaller performance impact, just 4%. This made it perform almost identically to DLSS, whereas the old filter saw a huge performance drop of 13%, which is the sort of impact you will feel in gameplay. The results from this game show that DLSS is really now dead in the water. With Nvidia's previous freestyle filter, there was definitely a reason to use DLSS in a game like Metro Exodus. The visual quality was decent enough and it didn't come with the performance impact of freestyle sharpening. To me, the balance between visuals and performance back then sided with DLSS. But now with the new freestyle filter performing equivalently to DLSS for what is in my opinion noticeably better visual quality, I don't see any reason to opt for DLSS as your performance enhancing option. This is further illustrated in our Battlefield 5 results, again around a 2.5% performance drop using the new freestyle sharpening filter with a 78% resolution scale compared to just running a 78% resolution scale. DLSS performs a bit better actually outperforming the non-sharpened 78% scaled image, but as you will have seen earlier the image quality difference is enormous between the two. The sharpened presentation blows it out of the water. I'd happily sacrifice a few frames to get the much sharper image from the non-DLSS method. Overall, I think this situation is really interesting. AMD introducing Radeon image sharpening basically forced Nvidia to act in updating their sharpening filter available through Freestyle. In the process of doing so, they've ended up creating a better solution than DLSS, which was advertised as a key selling point for RTX graphics cards. So in a way, Nvidia has been forced into competing with themselves thanks to strong competition in the GPU market as a whole. And this is what I really love to see. Competition in these areas means more innovation and better solutions for gamers everywhere. The new freestyle feature is much better than what came before, and on top of that, Nvidia owners now get their own ultra low latency mode and other improvements like 30-bit color support, all driven by competition. Then Nvidia has fired their own shot back with integer scaling, which I didn't look at in this video, but does perform pretty much as you would expect and performs well. I guess Intel was the first with that for their integrated graphics, but out of the two major GPU players, it's now up to AMD to respond and integrate integer scaling into their own GPU drivers. Digging deep into image sharpening, I actually think Nvidia has the better solution overall here when compared to Radeon image sharpening. Freestyle can achieve equivalent image quality, but it also has an adjustable strength slider which is great for games like The Division 2 that are a bit over-processed with default settings. You can also configure it on a game-by-game -game basis, whereas Radeon image sharpening is a global toggle. Nvidia's solution is also much more compatible, it works with all Nvidia GPUs and supports all modern APIs including DX11. Currently, Radeon Image Sharpening is exclusive to Navi GPUs and doesn't support DX11. While RAS has the advantage of a lower performance impact on Navi, restricting it to newer GPUs and not supporting DX11 doesn't make a lot of sense given I'm sure many gamers would appreciate the feature even if it had a 3-6% performance hit like on Nvidia GPUs. 
There is still room for improvement on the NVIDIA front though. Their whitelist of games to support Freestyle is large, but not comprehensive. Games I previously tested like Hitman 2 and Resident Evil 2 are not on the list, and they're fairly major titles released in the last year or so. I'd really like to see support opened up for all games, even if it's a beta or unsupported toggle. Eventually, AMD will get around to supporting every game with RAS, and that could leave NVIDIA behind. The other thing I'd like to see is DLSS killed off entirely. For enthusiasts like you guys watching this video, you now know that using resolution downsampling plus NVIDIA's freestyle sharpening filter is the best option, effectively killing DLSS if you know what you're doing. But DLSS has the advantage of being a simple one-click button, which is a great solution for regular Joe users. If the DLSS option was replaced with a one-click option for sub-native rendering plus a bit of sharpening on top, it would deliver better results and be open to more GPUs, not just the RTX line. They could even use the same acronym, just call it deluxe low-cost sharpening software or something like that. Of course, I don't expect NVIDIA to kill one of their advertised RTX features so soon or swap out DLSS for something better that wouldn't incentivize people to upgrade from Pascal, but I think it's clear now that DLSS is a huge waste of time and the way forward is really these sorts of post-processing filters in combination with a small resolution reduction. So this is a lot of words on the topic. I hope you all appreciate the in-depth analysis on this one as always. If you like what we do, there are three great ways to support us. Just simply subscribing is fantastic. Then if you want to support us directly, we have our Patreon page and you can get merch like this t-shirt that I'm wearing. Links in the description. That's it. Back to more testing. I'll catch you in the next one.